And for more on this historic meeting, I spoke a brief time ago with Sung Yoon Lee, a professor of Korean studies at Tufts University's Fletcher School. Professor Lee, this was a historic meeting between the two leaders, but was there any substance behind the smiles? There was a lot of substance for North Korea. It indeed is a historic moment for the North Korean leader because just by flashing a few smiles for the cameras and coming across as an affable, normal head of state, Kim Jong-un has effected a dramatic image makeover from little rocket man to global everyman, a reasonable leader with whom the outside world can do business. What kind of business? Nuclear negotiations which always entail concessions, money flow from the outside to Pyongyang's coffers. Now, President Trump said today that North Korea has played the U.S. before, but it won't be played again. Do you share his confidence as he heads towards this summit with Kim Jong-un? Well, just looking at precedents, various American officials, academics and journalists have always come into meetings with Kim the I, the II, and even Kim Jong-un, whom Mike Pompeo, the CIA director, met just a few weeks ago. They have come, come to these encounters with such low expectations when they actually find out that the North Korean dictator is not crazy, quite reasonable, well-informed, self-effacing, has a sense of humor, and at times says strangely pleasing rational things like, I understand that the U.S. troops in South Korea play a stabilizing role. Therefore, I am not calling for their immediate withdrawal. Then the outsider comes away from the meeting mesmerized, convinced that he has gained some deep new insight into the nature of the regime, usually by virtue of his own intellect, empathy, and charisma. This is a trap, an elab elaborate trap that Kim has set for Trump. And I don't think President Trump is really well prepared to go into the meeting because such is the tendency to patronize the bizarre North Korean dictator. Well, you sound very skeptical. And the North and South Korean leaders have agreed on this goal of realizing through complete denuclearization a nuclear free Korean peninsula. Does that mean no U.S. nuclear capable ships and aircraft? anywhere near North Korea. That's right. It is a strange formulation, this phrase, denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, because there are no nukes in the South. So why do we keep on blithely using that formulation? Well, North Korea occasionally, quite frankly, tells you what they mean by that. They mean dislodging the U.S. nuclear extended deterrence from the region, getting the U.S. troops out of South Korea, the abrogation of the U.S.-South Korea military alliance, and getting U.S. troops out of Japan eventually as well. So you have very two different definitions and two very different objectives in collision here. Professor Lee, thank you so much for joining us.